In this video, we're going to look at uh, triggers and what we can do with triggers to create a game mechanic. And by a game mechanic, I just mean something that's gonna happen due to player input or player actions. So what a trigger is, is simply a three-dimensional volume or two-dimensional area if you're building a 2D game um, that the physics engine can detect when an object comes into that volume or leaves that volume. Um, which is a very useful mechanic. It saves us a lot of coding, programming, uh, checking distances and such. So it's a feature of Unity and a lot of game engines that you should take advantage of. So to create this, um, first thing we're going to do is, and this make a little bit more sense as we go along here, we're just gonna create an empty and I'm gonna call this uh, platform. Okay. So let's go to our scene view so we can see where that is. Right. Thereabouts, close to, close to Ethan. Okay, now there's nothing in it, and this is just gonna serve as an empty parent to store our uh, platform. So I'm gonna to add to that a 3D cube, 3D object cube. Okay. Uh, and then I'm gonna move the platform up, something like that. Okay. And then this is gonna be a platform that we're gonna be able to jump on and it's gonna move. So let's make it a little bit easier, a little bit bigger, uh, scale it up the x direction by four, the y direction, I'm gonna scale down so it's nice and thin. And the z direction is gonna go up by four as well. Okay. Now, if we look at this cube, by default when you add a primitive in Unity, uh, you also get a collider, in this case a box collider. So the box collider, um, or colliders in general, will act as if the object is solid. If I jump on this object now, uh, I won't go through it. I'll stop on top of the collider, um, which is something we want. We want to be able to jump on this without sliding off of it. Um, the other thing that there's, well, you may have noticed there's an option here, is trigger. And what that allows us to do is treat a collider as a trigger. Um, so it won't be a physical hard surface, but will allow the physics engine to know whether we've um, intersected that trigger. So since we need both a collider and a trigger, we're going to add a second collider. So down under add component, I'm gonna to go to box collider, add that in. And we're gonna to toggle that to be is trigger. And then here using the uh, center setting here, the Y, I'm gonna slide it up a little bit. Maybe a little bit of an overlap. And that'll allow Unity to detect when we've jumped into that. Uh, just, and just for simplicity, I might make it a little bit taller. Make the Y size to make sure we're, we know we're in there. Okay, so now we have a collider that we can stand on and we got a trigger that uh, we can jump into. So now that we have our trigger and our uh, collider added, we want to add in an FSM uh, to give us some logic to what's going on. So clicking on your clue, uh, <laughs> clicking on your cube, uh, we're going to add a component. We're going to add a Playmaker FSM. Okay, and we're going to name that Moving Platform, and press the Edit button to open up the Playmaker window. I'm going to dock that, and. Our first state here, this state is gonna detect when the player has uh, made contact with the with trigger, or has entered the trigger. So we're gonna name this state, uh, wait for enter, like, like so. And we need to add in some um, actions. So opening up the action browser, I'm gonna dock that over here with my inspector. Okay. We're gonna search for trigger event, and add that in. Oh, make sure you're on your state. Add that in. So you can see we have a few options here. The first is uh, called trigger, and these are the trigger events, if you will. So on trigger enter, this is gonna fire this event or fire an event when um, a, another trigger or collider enters this trigger. The on trigger stay gets called every frame when um, a collider is inside this trigger. And on trigger exit gets called when you leave. So we're gonna start with on enter. And because we only want this to be triggered when the player jumps in, not when the terrain collides with it or anything else, we're gonna choose uh, a collide tag of player. And then uh, we're gonna need to send an event. So when this happens, we're gonna move to a different state. So we need to create that new state and that's gonna be moving up. Okay. And we also need to create an event to transition us from one to the other. 
So I'm going to call this uh, event uh, go to go to move up. Very creative. And add that to my first date. So add transition, go to move up, and then connect like so. Okay, so when we jump on the trigger uh, or enter the trigger, it's going to move us to moving up. And now we need to actually be able to move. So back to our action browser, we can search for uh, move towards. It's not the only way to do it, but it's an easy way. Um, I'm going to use the move towards. And what this does real simply is move towards a target. Um, and so you can use a game object to move towards. You can type in a position, a three-dimensional position. Um, and you got a few other options here, max speed, finish distance, um, and such things. I'm going to turn my max speed down. Um, has a tendency of kind of throwing our character a little bit. I'm going to turn it down a lot, down to two. Um, and now we need a place to move towards. So let's go back to our scene view. Okay. And clicking on the platform object, okay, the empty parent, okay, empty parent. I'm going to right click and add another empty. And I'm going to call this uh, platform target one. Okay. And right now it's at the same place as the cube, so we wouldn't move anywhere. I'm gonna move this up, and I'm just gonna move it vertically. If you wanna move it up to the side, you're welcome to do that, that works as well. Um, we'll talk about a, com uh, a difficulty or complexity of that in just a bit. Um, and so now we have a target to move towards. So back into Playmaker, uh, we can grab that empty object and drag it into the target object. Okay. And let's see what happens now. Okay, so I got Ethan, I'm gonna go jump on my platform and absolutely nothing happened. So let's take a look at what happened. Okay, we're still waiting. Um, I very cleverly forgot to uh, set the send event. So let's do that. So back in the wait for enter state, uh, the send event, click on that and go move to up. Let's try that again. I'm on it and it moved up, okay? Now, if you left your max speed um, really high, you may see some weird behavior out of uh, Ethan. Uh, so setting your max speed low is a good way to solve some problems, okay? Now you'll notice when I jumped off, nothing happened. So that's the thing we're going to deal with next is when we jump off this uh, target, we want it to move back down, okay? So back into Playmaker, we're gonna have um, a new state. This is a state that's gonna move downwards. So we're gonna add a state. We're gonna call it uh, move down. Again, very creative. And we're gonna transition from moving up to moving down. So again, we're gonna create another event. I'm gonna call it go to move down, all right? We'll add that transition over here, connect them like so, all right? Now, we have a couple options of how we can do this. You may have noticed here that the move towards has a finish event, which is great. So if we get to the top, we could call this uh, go to move event and move back down. It may or may not be what you want for your game. Um, depends on your goals and your game design. Um, but I, at least for this tutorial, very much want it when I jump off or fall off this platform for it to move back down. Okay, so we're gonna add in a new action. Right, back to our action browser, and this is gonna be another trigger event. And instead of on trigger enter, we're gonna go on trigger exit. And again, we're going to uh, look for objects tagged player. And when that happens, we're gonna do the send event of move down, or go to move down. So that's gonna move over here to this state here. So let's populate this state a little bit here, the move down. Um, once again, this is going to use a move towards action, just like we did on the way up. But we need another, uh, we need a new target. So what we're gonna move towards is another empty. So back into our scene view. I'm gonna click on the platform and right click empty or create empty and name this platform target two. Okay. And I'm just gonna leave that one where it's at. Um, that should allow us to come back to the original position and create kind of a ping pong effect, so to speak. Okay, so 
Let's drag that platform target into target object. Okay. And let's see what happens. Okay. Let's jump on our platform. It moves up. If I get off, it goes back down. Now you notice it didn't go all the way down. The reason for that is this finish distance here. We're at one meter. We're, stuck, we're finishing a long ways away from where we want to be. So let's decrease that maybe to a tenth of a meter. Okay. And we could do the same thing with the moving up. Our finish distance is one meter. Let's make it a tenth of a meter. Let's see how that works. Okay. So jump on it. It goes up. Notice it's going higher because we're getting closer to our finish distance. If I jump off, it goes back down. Now, if I jump on it again, it doesn't go up. So we need to make this Playmaker a full and complete cycle. Okay. So let's go to Playmaker here. Um, when we've moved down, we can now take advantage of this finished event here. Um, so let's add a transition here. We can add a stock one, finished. And that's going to come back to here. And then on the move towards action, we can fire off the event finished. Let's see how that works. So we jump on our platform, it raises up. We jump off, it goes back down. We get on. Okay. You notice there's a little bit of weirdness there. We don't jump on it. Okay. And I believe what's happening there is a little bit of the Unity uh, controller. When you just kind of bump up on top of the platform, it thinks you're um, jumping. Okay. And we're in a stable cycle and such things there. So another thing that we can do here with our platform, and one of the reasons we built the platform the way we did, and that's with a uh, empty parent and the targets and the actual platform is ch children of that empty target, is so that this platform can easily be turned into a prefab, drag and dropped into our scene. It's also really easy to move these targets around and control where our platform is going. Um, in the previous uh, example so far, I've just shown the platform moving up and down, um, which works. If we try to move our platform side to side, so if I take this target object and I move it to the side, uh, we get a side effect. Let me show you what that is. So if I jump on this target, you'll notice that Ethan slides sideways. The platform's not really sure what's going on. It starts to freak out. And the reason is that um, there's nothing keeping Ethan with the platform. So there's two ways to deal with that, or at least two ways to deal, deal with that. One is to use physics materials so that there's some friction. Uh, between the cube and, and Ethan. That can work really quite well. Um, the other way is to parent Ethan to the platform. And what that does is when the platform moves, Ethan moves with it. Um, Ethan will still be able to move around on the platform. Um, and that's kind of a more general way of doing it. So let's go back to Playmaker and see how we can set that up. Okay, so in this moving up state, um, once we start to move up, that's when we want to parent the object, okay? Uh, or rather, we want to uh, set Ethan's parent to be the cube. So if we go to our action browser um, and you search for set parent, which I've already done here, um, you can add the set parent action to your state. And I'm going to move that all the way up to the top. So click in the little gear, move action to top. Right. We just want to make sure that gets called first. So before we start moving, um, we're going to set Ethan's parent to this cube. Okay. So our first option here is the game object. This is the object that's going to be uh, whose parent is going to change. Um, by default, it's user use the user use the owner. Um, which would be the cube. Well, we don't want to change the cube's parent. We want to change the player's parent. Um, and thankfully, our trigger event has an option to help us out here. So go back to the wait for enter. And you'll see the last option here is store collider. Okay. Um, you can click on this. I already have a uh, player variable, but you can create a new player uh, or a new variable, name it player. And then we're going to store our uh, the object that's collided with our trigger um, as a variable. Okay, so if we go to variables, you can see I have a player, it's a type game object. Right. And then back in our moving up state, 
we can, uh, the game object, we're gonna specify that. We're gonna hit the equal sign so we can choose one of our variables and that's gonna be the player, okay? And then we need to set its parent. The parent's gonna be the cube, all right? Now, when we jump off this target or when we jump off this platform, we need to unparent the player object. Okay? And so likewise, just like what we did here, we're gonna go to our move down. Okay? So once we're doing this, we're already moving down. We're gonna add a set parent action to this. And again, we're gonna move it to the top. We're gonna change the uh, game object to specify game object, hit the equals, choose our player. And in this case, we're gonna leave the parent uh, slot empty. And this sets the parent to null or essentially allows the uh, player object to be its own parent. Okay, so let's take a look and see how this works. I think there may still be one problem. We'll see how happy Ethan is with this. So I jump on, I go up. Notice I'm not sliding anymore. I'm transitioning nicely. There's a little bit of a jiggle there, I think, um, from the camera rig. If I jump off, well, let's actually jump off. If I jump off, the platform goes back down and Ethan is free to roam again. And you can notice this again on the hierarchy. Here's my third person controller. Um, I get on, it becomes a child of the cube. We get off and it's its own child again. Okay. One issue I have had with this in a little bit of testing um, is the ground check. And I guess it mine's already set here. So if you are having issues, let me show you what that might look like. So by default, um, the ground check is 0 0.01, which can sometimes leave Ethan up in the air. He thinks he's up in the air when he's not. Uh, you can increase this to 0.1 or 0.2, and that'll bring Ethan back down to the ground um, and play as usual. Okay, so this ground check setting on the third person controller may need to be tweaked. If you're doing first person, um, don't think that'll be an issue, but you can uh, play with that as well. So there you go. Uh, we've used a trigger to create a platform that reacts to our player jumping onto it or jumping off of it. Um, I'd encourage you to play around with this. This can be used for doors, drawbridges, all kinds of different um, actions. So that'll do it for this video. Uh, thanks for joining. Hope it was useful. I'll see you next time. And we'll look at using triggers to create collectibles as well as um, having a UI element to keep track of the collectible.